is there a way to invest in Tesla without actually buying the stock and receive dividends? So far, Tesla has been one of the hottest performers in the S&P 500 this year. In the first quarter, the stock's massive 68% return contributed nearly 9% to the SPX's 3.7% advance. Although, of course, you can't ignore the brutal 73% collapse in 2022. So you may be a Tesla bull and consider the company as an extremely attractive long-term investment. I mean, the company is rich with innovation and currently has a large majority of market share in the EV space. Or you may be a Tesla bear and consider the company overvalued, especially now as the company faces new competition, which could affect its growth and earnings results. So is there another way to invest in the company? Yes, there is. A new hot ETF on the scene has captured increasing volume over the last several weeks with an interesting take on the underlying company. TSLY. This is the Yield Max Tesla Option Income Strategy ETF. And the first thing you see is an absolute monster of a dividend yield of 63%. I mean, come on, what does that even mean? So is this a dividend trap? And should you consider this investment as an alternative to Tesla? Well, to begin, let's just take a look at its fundamentals. This ETF was established on November 22nd, 2022. So it is very new. We're talking less than six months. But despite its recent inception date, the ETF already has more than $50 million of assets under management. By the end of this year, I'd probably expect the fund to have well over 100 million, if it continues to grow at the same pace. So right off the bat, you also see a very ugly expense ratio of 0.99%. And I know many would say it's negligible considering its extreme dividend yield, but remember, high expense ratios can have a significant negative effect on the ETF's returns compounding over many years. Now, because the ETF was recently established, it doesn't really have any technicals to look into. However, taking a look at its performance, this ETF has returned 15.6% year to date, outperforming the S&P 500, which has returned 9.17%, and outperforming other extremely popular covered calls dividend ETFs like JEPI and XYLD, which have returned 4.12% and 6.49% respectively. So how does TSLY work? And how does it provide such an insane dividend yield? By the way, I do want to mention some amazing news. I have officially partnered with Seeking Alpha, which is a phenomenal platform that publishes news updates and a variety of articles with in-depth analysis on the financial markets. You can find a link in the description down below for an annual Seeking Alpha premium membership for 59% off. So take advantage of this, you don't want to miss it. Now back to the video. This ETF uses synthetic covered calls to harvest income from Tesla's volatility and it's actually very interesting. But what is a synthetic covered call? So we all know what a covered call is. It's a strategy where an investor owns an underlying asset like a stock and sells call options against it to generate premium. This strategy is used by JEPI and XYLD. But a synthetic covered call is when the investor creates a position using options that replicates the cash flows of a covered call without actually owning the underlying asset. So how do you do this? This ETF chooses a strike price, typically at the money, which means the current price that Tesla is trading at and it sells puts. But it also buys an equal amount of calls at the same strike price. This then creates what is referred to a synthetic long position. These positions also have the same time to expiration, which is usually between six months to one year. The call option gives the investor the right to buy the underlying asset at the strike price. The put option obligates the investor to buy the underlying asset at the strike price if it falls below that price. So when coupled together, the behavior of these two options simulates owning shares, which is kind of awesome. So you may be asking, well, why not just own shares in the first place? Well, there are two key reasons. For one, a synthetic long position requires a lot less capital. So it's cheaper to do a synthetic long position versus just buying stock. And the reason is simple. When you buy a call option and sell a put option at the same time, the premium you receive from selling put options cancels out the money you spend to buy a call option. So for example, if Tesla stock sits at $150, instead of taking a long position and needing to pay $15,000 to buy 100 shares, you can take on a synthetic long position where you sell a put option at the 150 strike price and receive a $100 premium and you buy a call option at the 150 strike price for $100.
So essentially, you pay no money. Now the second reason is that a synthetic long position can provide more flexibility. So you can kind of play with the options depending on how you feel the stock might perform, rather than just buying the stock and riding the wave. But I do have one major issue with this. When doing a synthetic long position, if you only plan on taking profits, then it's a great idea. But the moment the stock begins losing value, all you can do is exit your positions and take the loss, which is realized unless you have enough capital to be assigned shares according to the number of put options that you sold. But when you own the stock, you own an asset, something that is valuable, and any losses are unrealized until you exit your position. If you're confused about this, don't worry, I'll explain this in more detail in another video. Moving on. So after a fund takes on a synthetic long position, the fund now sells covered calls against the majority of its synthetic long position, just like you would sell calls for a covered call strategy. This allows them to harvest the theta and collect premium for both the put and the call options that they sold. As for the covered calls, the calls have an expiration of one month or less in contrast to the synthetic option positions, which have six month to one year expiration. The covered calls also have a strike price that is approximately five to 15% out of the money, which means above the current Tesla share price. This allows the fund to profit when Tesla rises in value. Now, the fund also owns treasuries, which are used as collateral for the options, which also generate income. And you can see it clearly when you look at the fund's holding breakdown. Now, with all that being said, let's get to the real question. How effective is this strategy and how does it compare to the returns of its underlying stock, Tesla? Well, let's take a look. This chart compares the overall performance of the ETF and Tesla stock side by side. Immediately, you could see that the stock has less volatility, so its beta should be relatively less. But when you analyze its overall performance, you can see a very interesting relation. So if we solely consider specific timeframes, you can get a good idea of the problems with the CTF. Looking at Tesla's chart from December 2nd, 2022 to January 3rd, 2023, Tesla experienced a 44.52% decline. Now, if we compare that to the chart of TSLY with dividends reinvested from December 2nd, 2022 to January 3rd, 2023, TSLY experienced a 38.46% decline. Now from January 3rd until February 15th, Tesla experienced a 98.19% rise. But from January 3rd until February 15th, TSLY experienced a 39.6% rise. So you see the ETF practically replicates Tesla when it's on a downtrend, doing better by around 6%. But when Tesla's on an upward trend, the ETF lags behind by a very significant amount, rising by only 39% versus Tesla, which rose by almost 100%. And this again is why covered call ETFs do not outperform in bull markets. They constantly cap growth potential in exchange for premium. So despite the fund's unbelievable dividend yield, its returns are not matched by just simply owning Tesla stock. If we take an initial investment of $10,000 and we put it in Tesla when it bottomed on January 3rd, until now, you would have $15,200, a growth of 52%. Now, if we invested $10,000 into TSLY from January 3rd until now, you would have $12,614, a growth of only 26%. So my verdict, I think I would just prefer to buy the stock. And that is all for this video. If you haven't yet, please make sure to hit the thumbs up button for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to my channel. Thank you guys so much and I will see you in my next one.